Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the Glyphs panel and also OpenType format or OpenType font. Let's get going. What is OpenType all about? Well, it's basically been developed by Microsoft and Adobe together and what it allows for is 65,536 characters. Previously, we were limited to 256 with PostScript and Type 1 and TrueType font, etc, etc. So we've got a huge range of characters we can have. And they call them glyphs when they're in the glyphs panel. And all it means is character, really. But you can't say character because a glyph could be a copyright symbol. So really, if you just think characters, that's what it is. But it's not strictly right. So the, the fancy word is glyph. So we can have these 65,536 characters. It doesn't mean we're gonna get all them. It means the font foundry or the people who design the typeface have to put them there in the first place. So is this important to most average users of Photoshop? Probably not, but if I was to put some text on an image and I needed sort of symbols like proper fractions and stuff, stuff like that, Maybe it is. So I think it is quite important, but it's quite good fun playing around with fonts because we've got SVG fonts now and we've got variable fonts. Now, SVG fonts and variable fonts are also open type fonts, but we've be, been with the normal open type for quite a while now. And I'll show you a normal open type font. And that would be something like Myriad Pro. The reason I know it's open type, it's got that two tone O there for open type. The other ones like Emoji One is an SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic open type font. And Acumen Variable Concept is a variable open type font. And I will explain the differences in a minute. So we have three flavors of open type font. All the big players are in on some of them. I think for variable font, I think Google, Adobe, Apple, and Microsoft are you know trying to work on it. Because they're commercial companies, they suddenly go off at tangents. And this is probably why we got three different versions of OpenType. And a lot of stuff is geared towards the web. And I think that variable fonts or the variable OpenType font will probably end up on the web. I don't know. And maybe the SVG one as well. But anyway, this is where we are at the moment. So how do I know? As I said, it's got to know. Unfortunately, some I've got the Typekit symbol because I've downloaded them from Typekit. If it's an Adobe font, which this one is, it will have the word pro there, and that indicates it's an open type font. So most of Adobe's fonts are open type. In fact, all of them I think are at the moment. So that indicates the pro indicates it's open type. Slightly annoying, but you know, I'd have to go and experiment to see if that font would support what I want. So let's just pick Cronus Pro for, for now and show you what Cronus Pro has got in terms of glyphs or characters. It's got a hell of a lot. Not everything, but a lot. And mainly it's supporting, by the looks of it, what I call ligatures and stuff like that. It's a Romanesque looking font. So I want to find out if it supports um, certain mass symbols. I click on there. It does, but not very many. So it's one of those sort of more decorative fonts. It's not very functional. But it can, as I say, be developed, this font, to have all these mass symbols. But you probably have to re-download it. Anyway, so if I wanted ligatures... And ligatures means the way two characters connect to each other. So if I wanted that ligature there, double click it and it'll put the ligature in. Now, I want to point out the character panel at the moment because the character panel has that highlighted. So that is for standard ligatures. So if I had that highlighted, it would automatically do the ligature for me. If I come up to the character panel menu, under open type, you can see it's ticked. Now, the ones that are in gray or grayed out, it means that this font doesn't support them, but they're all down there anyway. So you could tick here if you wanted to, but they're all down there. So if you go ticking these ones now or, or highlighting them, it says you come into the panel menu. Now this is, for instance, I think it's stylish or discretionary ligatures. So if I wanted to know what discretionary ligatures it had, I could come here. Um, so if I kept that pressed and I pressed ST, it's done a discretionary ligature automatically. Personally, the only one I might leave on is the standard ligature and the rest I would leave alone because you get problems when you highlight ones like first, which is ordinal, by the way, um, one ST. It's just represented by the first sort of characters. If I turn that off, returned and wait one ST, 
tea. It's not put it there. The trouble is, I could stay like that and keep that highlighted. The trouble is, though, once I start typing an O, it will put that as an ordinal as well, like for degrees, etc. So it's not ideal to keep them all ticked. But I do keep the ligature ones on occasionally. Right, so you need to know if your font is going to support what you're going to do. And if you like that font, you need to check it's got everything necessary. I know this is probably not relevant to a lot of photographers, let's say, but for people that do this type of work every day, graphic designers, these things are really important. It's nice to be able to have um, alternates for like ligatures, etc., etc. Right, let's show you a font like Emoji One, which is an open type SVG scalable vector graphic font. It's a great font to use. I'm just trying to get it now. I'm using my tablet today. Um, do not type because it will go back to your default font, which is usually for most of us a Myriad Pro unless you changed it. So do not type. Just double click what you want and I'll press return on that and you'll be fine. It's got a few little things that I really like and they're a bit gimmicky, but if you double click you, then double click S. You get the US flag, same for GB. So the ISO codes for a country will bring up the flags automatically. So I really do like this um, emoji font. I know people run them down and I'm 60 and I use them in my text message or SMS messages. So honestly, what's wrong with them? And they're scalable, they're fonts. So you can have quite good fun with them, you know, playing around. So Let's get rid of that off the screen. A more normal one would be Trajan Color, which is from Adobe. So let's pick Trajan Color. Right, if I start typing and put T-E-S or something like that. By the way, if you haven't committed the text by pressing that um, tick symbol or going Command or Control Return, you can move it around by putting the cursor near the text and then move it. So I can't control the color. It's defaulted to this sort of goldy color. The SVG bit allows this color as well and this kind of beveled effect, and I really like it. But unfortunately, if I want to change um, all those characters to another color, I have to do it individually. Now notice that came up there, and I'll show you why. Command K, inside my type section in the preferences, Command or Control K to get that up, I've got Enable Type Layer Glyph Alternates. So when I highlight a letter, the alternates will appear underneath. And I would keep all these ticks, enable missing glyph protection. So if you haven't got a glyph there, it will do its best to put that glyph in, so to speak. And use escape key to commit text. It's just another way of committing text, so I always keep it ticked as well. So if I highlight that letter, underneath I can pick another color. Unfortunately, I have to do it for every single letter. I cannot do it by just highlighting the whole lot and changing it. If I, if I highlight the whole lot and say, well, I want to change it to a certain color and only allowed me to do the T. And if I double click that, I put a pound sign in anyway, back into the uh, that color. So there's quite a lot going on here. It's not a font that's actually got a lot of other stuff going on in terms of um, symbols, etc. It's quite small. So, you know, it's up to the font or typeface designer to put this stuff in. But I really like that Trajan font. Let's show you a variable font. Let's get rid of this layer now. Uh, a variable font, which is an open type font, would be uh, Acumen Variable Concept. So that's a really good font to show you um, how a variable font works. Now, the minute you pick it, the properties panel comes out. The character panel has nothing to do with it. It's the properties panel. Everything here you've got in the, the, this panel here, but weight and width you've got. So if I just type a couple of characters and then highlight one character, I can change the weight of that character and weight is boldness. That's what it means. And the width. But you're not really picking the character. What you don't realize is you're picking condensed 75 bold 70, 732. They're already there. So they're fonts that exist, but you're just matching that font. But, you know, you are controlling it, but you're just matching it because the font is already there. A typeface is a family of fonts and a font is an incident of that family. I'm being pedantic, I know that. So that is the variable font. And this is all of the open type fonts. So hopefully you can see that they give you great control, providing the font foundry or typeface design has given you that control. 
but we're not open types not going away this normal open type isn't the variable one and the svg one well we'll see um it depends if they get SVG into the variable one, that would be really great for web designers, etc. If they want to deliver these fonts to web pages. That's it, guys. I hope you got something from this. It's not the most interesting subject, but I do love my typography. Thank you very much. <laughs>